going on YouTube? My name's Jamie, this is officially gassed, and this is my Mercedes A45 AMG, tuned by MSL Performance. That boy is Benny Hanna. So welcome guys, um, as the intro said, today we're going to be having a look at my Mercedes A45. It's not going to be too in depth and again not too technical, just kind of my view um, on the car, um, a few other little bits and bobs and um, yeah we're just basically going to have a little talk. So I thought we'd start by um, talking about the engine which is a 2 litre twin scroll um, turbocharged engine. Stop form these cars come with 355 brake horsepower, uh, 450 newton meters of torque. This is actually being tuned by MSL Performance, which is a world renowned uh, Mercedes uh, performance tuner. Um, they're located in Birmingham. Um, they're actually possibly the best in the UK. Um, so that they've done the map on this. Um, it's running a stage one map and also a custom Hypercross intake, which has a four inch bore. Um, up from the stock 2.6 inch bore, which is a very restrictive intake. Um, so basically this is uh, being dynoed at 421 brake horsepower and 643 newton meters of torque. And the difference to stock is night and day. In fact, when I first got this car, it was completely like stock, like the engine was completely stock untouched. Um, and what I found was the power kind of almost come in phases. So you had a lockdown low, and then kind of almost like a flat spot mid-range and then the main bulk of the power like at the high rev range which is okay but it just felt like it always wanted something more and then doing that tune and with the intake it's completely it's just it's, it's made it into a different animal it really is a beast it pulls strongly from well from start to finish basically so yeah um it's got the seven speed dual clutch transmission on this it's not mapped or anything I don't believe there is a gearbox map for these gearboxes. I might be wrong, but as far as I'm aware, I don't. I think you can adjust the parameters a little bit and play with it a little bit, but I don't think there's like a map being put out. Gearbox changes are lightning, like the gear changes are lightning quick. Um, and obviously, if you've got it in sport, you get that nice pop. Uh, can't complain about the gearbox at all. And standard, this car, uh, 0 to 60, would be around a 4.6 second mark. Um, with a limited speed of 155 mile an hour. So with the map, what you get is an estimated 0 to 60 time of about 3.8 seconds, and it's been delimited, so it'll go all the way to whatever it'll go to. Who knows, 170 plus probably. Like honestly, if you if you catch certain supercars off guard, you're really gonna piss them off. Believe me, I've done it. I've, I've, I've honestly done it. Um, it's, it's just a nice little weapon, you know? And it's got a four wheel drive system too. Um, so you've got tons of grip. In fact, you've got endless grip. Steering's, steering's very well weighted. Um, I believe it's electric steering. Um, you know, it tucks in well. It's, it's a very well balanced car. Some people do say they plow a little bit um, if you push them hard. I've pushed this hard, but I haven't, I haven't really felt it plow too much. I mean, when it comes to four wheel drive cars, I guess, Um, 
done but this is this is not far off like you know what i mean it does go where you point it like you know in respect to handling you know falling it's, it's, it's pretty tough the ride setup it's, it's got like um it's got this is suspension is pretty hard this hasn't got adaptive suspension i believe you can get them um with adaptive suspension on the facelift model i'm not sure if you can get it on a pre-facelift this is a pre-facelift this is a uh, late 2014 model it's pretty hard but um i don't commute in this every day um it's not my daily driver um i go out to have fun and the suspension being hard it almost allows you to feel the road a little bit more like you know what i mean being a bit more connected with the car so i ain't got no problems with it um if you're an old granny and you've got a bad back, then yeah, it might be a bit shifty. But to anyone who really just cares about the engine and the, and the fun factor of these cars, you know, a little bit of a hard ride isn't going to matter too much. And again, it's not the hardest ride, it is definitely bearable. So, one thing you notice when you're in this car is you do feel very connected, it's got a lot of drama. As I said, the ride is slightly hard. The, the engine looks great. Um, the pops and bangs from the gearbox and the burbles and things like that. It almost puts you in a in a kind of state of mind where you you feel like you're in a bit of a race car. It's only a hot hatch, but hot hatches um, as of lately they're a different level. They're hyper hatches now. They're um, they've stepped up the game so much, power performance wise, even fuel economy, things like that. I mean, on a run. And no jokes, if, if you drive like a bit of a granny, 70 mile an hour, seven, in seventh gear, I can get just over 40 miles to the gallon. So it's mad, like, you know what I mean? If you, if you think about the power of this car, getting 40, 40 miles to the gallon, it's crazy. Obviously, if you've got a bit of a fat missus, you probably ain't gonna get that kind of MPG, but luckily I don't, so I'm all good. If you thrash it, low 20s maybe, I ain't, I've never seen it under 20, which is amazing. And as I said, coming from an M3, um, which struggled to get into the 20s, um, this, this feels like it's fucking a, like it's like running on diesel or something. Like, you know what I mean? The, the MPG feels great for me. And plus, this is smoking M3. So to any M3 owners, I have owned one, and this this will smoke an M3. In fact, I have smoked a couple of M3s in this. As far as running costs are concerned. Um, I mean, what, what are you looking at? You're looking at like tires. I mean, since I've owned this car, so let's talk about since I've owned this car. I spent. This, no, what, this guy wants up. There we go. Right. Show this S4 good. Right. Can never turn down a little uh, a little blast. My car's not warm yet, so I don't want to push it too hard. That's my excuse. So yeah, I mean, as far as money's concerned, what I've spent on it, um, I've had the car about six months now. It was due uh, a major service, so I've actually done a major service on it. And that consisted of like spark plugs, Haldex oil, gearbox oil, um, and a few other kind of service items. The Mercedes wanted 1,200 pounds to get the, uh, the, the, the full service done. I shopped around a little bit. Um, I found a quite um, well, or highly regarded um, Mercedes, uh, Mercedes uh, service centre um, in Harrow um, and they've done everything with OEM parts and OEM oil and everything like that um, for £600 so it wasn't too bad apart from that I've put a couple of tyres on it on the front because you will see it being front wheel biased you will see the front tyres wearing faster than the rears it had some pikey tyres on it actually if I'm, if, if I'm honest with you at the front um, it's got Michelin's at the rear they weren't actually too badly worn, but as I say, because there were some um, Mickey Mouse tyres, I, I, I wanted them off. And having had um, uh, Toyo proxies on my M3 and found in them the best for grip, I whacked a, a pair on these. And um, yeah, great, no complaints. And I think well, they, they cost about £140 a tyre. So tyres, not too expensive, let's say £140 if you want to go with the Toyos, you can, you can, you can pay uh, less for, for slightly cheaper tyres. Um, Toyo's are mid-range premium I would say but I mean apart from that I haven't really spent any money apart from mods um, and obviously fuel but the thing is if you're like me and this is like my weekend car you kind of go out to fresh it so it is rarely that I do see that 40 mpg but it's nice to know that it does do the 40 mpg as far as um, 
styling and everything like that is concerned i mean that is one of the main reasons i actually bought this car the look of it is just it's aggressive you know like i say it's got drama this whole car once you sit in this car it does it really it's just got tons of drama and that's what i like in a car not too much but it's it's got the right amount for me you know it's got the front canards which look real cool and aggressive and i think it was like one of the first hot hatches to actually um do that kind of styling you see quite a lot of uh, other hot hatches and other cars doing that now but um it was the first when he's come out and it really did attract me to the car on top of that it's got a big old spoiler on the back which i think looks wicked um and it's, it's a must the aero pack on these is a must if you get one in my personal opinion um we'll pay a slight premium on the car for that but um you know it's, it's a must if you want to look because these do blend in quite well to normal traffic if you haven't got any um uh, aero styling pack on it apart from that you get like 19 inch wheels i believe with the um in fact, the 19 inch wheels that this has got are actually the uh, slightly upgraded ones because the stock ones are 18. I think they're like a five spoke wheel. This is a multi spoke 19 inch wheel with a diamond cut out grip. They look real cool, they sit real well with a car. What I've actually done to this one is because they come stock um, in matte black, I've never been a fan of matte black wheels. They just look crap in my opinion. So I've actually got these redone in gloss, um, which I think it kind of brings the car a little bit more uh, together. So much little uh, gloss black styling cues around the car that you know why they ever put matte black wheels on it in the first place i don't know not my thing might be other people who own this car's thing but personally not mine brakes not only do they look amazing um i think they're six pot up front i might be wrong probably get shot down for that but i'm pretty sure they're, they're six pot up front um they're bright red and they're big they look chunky um and it's got red brake calipers at the back too um, they don't only look good, they stop the car well too. It's got drilled and grooved um, discs too on the front and rear, which paired together, it, it really does, it stops as well as it goes, like, you know what I mean, which is very important when you've got a car with this kind of power. What I've actually done to this car too is I've upgraded the rear diffuser um, to the facelift model, which is late 2015 onwards. It just gives it that extra flair. The stock one does look a little bit it looks nice but it's just not very uh stand ish and i like my cars to stand out a little bit so i've done that but apart from that on the styling side that's it when we're talking about spec spec of this car this this um actual car i wouldn't say it's the highest spec car it's not the lowest i mean as i say it's got the aero pack it's got the amg sports exhaust which is a must if you want to crack some popples or the pops and crackles it's got the adaptive um adaptive um, cruise control it's got park assist so this car will actually park itself i've actually got the receipt for this car when it was bought new i didn't buy it new i've only had this car about six months but it was a one owner car lady of all people and it was 42k i mean if you spec these up you can get them up to like 53 54k um so it is crazy but um, the pricing of these now are actually quite good. I actually part X an Audi S3 that I owned before this, um, which was a saloon version, the 8V, um, for this car. Um, and all in all, I paid just under 26K for this. At that pricing range, what else can you get? You're looking at Golf R's, they're okay, um, full wheel drive, good tunability, just a little bit boring. I've only been recording today for about 10, 15 minutes. I've seen about 30 of them already, which is a big pull. So let me go into S3. Um, as I say, I've owned one. Nice, um, good quality um, cabin, you know, all the, all, all the right styling cues. Um, just not much drama and a bit numb to drive, if I'm honest with you. Type R, Honda Type R. Um, front wheel drive, not really my thing. And uh, styling on them is a bit too much. If I was 17, maybe so that leads us to the m135i or the m140i great engines absolutely great engines but you know what the thing is they are so boring to look at i mean you wouldn't even know if you saw one that's how bad it is they just there's nothing to set them aside from the stack one series it could be a 116d for all you know but that pretty much leaves us with the rs3 now when it comes to the rs3 if you look at the pricing difference between an rs3 and i'm talking like a a, a, a lower a lower price or, or the lowest price than auto trader rs3 compared to the lowest priced uh mercedes a45 there's almost a 10 grand difference i've seen low spec high mileage
mileage A45 going from about 21k on auto trader. And honestly, you cannot pick up an RS3 for less than about 30k on auto trader. So is there really a comparison? Can you compare them in the same conversation when it comes to the price, the price of it? Even if you did, there's there's a lot of speculation towards a better car. Again, in my eyes, except from the engine load of that RS3, it does lack drama. Um, but anyway, each to their own. I mean, personally, for me, this is the best car. I mean, I didn't have RS3 money, I'm not gonna lie with you. Would I have went for the RS3 if I had that kind of money? Do you know what, I don't even know if I would. I would have probably went for a facelift version of these. So one thing that is great about this car is the launch control. In fact, it's its party trick. It's a little bit tricky to get it into launch control, but once you know how to do it, and you've done it a few times, you can get it in quite quickly. Believe me, I've had to do it in the traffic lights a few times. liken the feeling of this when I launch it to for those of you in the UK have ever been to Four Park when you went on that ride stealth it has got aspects of that feeling like that it, you're stuck to the chair literally certain times I'm trying to hold on to the steering wheel like you know what I mean it, it really is that quick man like the g-force that it pulls is bananas bananas in fact it's, it's, it's one of the main reasons I love this car does it feel to drive? What is the acceleration like? In my personal view, it's, it's a fucking wet, isn't it? It, it? it flies. The amount of cars I fucking beat in this car is, is, is crazy. It, it, it just goes. You know, you put your foot down and I don't know if you can hear this, but listen to this. You get the intake when you let off the throttle, you get the pops when it changes gear. As I say, this car is just packed full of drama. It, it, it pulls like a train. I mean, also what I wanted to talk about, this being a real AMG, because there's speculation through um, AMG or other AMG owners that this isn't a real AMG, or they don't like to call it an AMG because apparently only milk comes in two litres and bullshit like that, like, you know what I mean? And that's usually said by the people that own the, the, the 6.2 litre AMGs that have the 6.3 badges on the side of them, which don't make too much sense to me. But if you look at the nuts and bolts of it, the thing that makes an AMG an AMG is the engine, right? And the, the, the thing about AMG engines is they are made start to finish by one person. And I mean down to the fact that if that person who's making the engine goes off sick, the production of that engine stops. And if that person who's uh, making this engine leaves, they actually throw the engine away. And this engine is hand built and it's built in the same way. So in my opinion, it's an AMG all day. And to be fair, it's usually the guys with the big 6.3 litres who are pissed off with these AMGs because they've been bummed by one of them. And believe me, this was smoking AMG off the line. 6.3, whatever fucking litre. These are rapid. It's banner. Don't get too upset.
please show some love, subscribe. There'll be loads more madness coming from this channel, hopefully. So stick with me, and thanks for watching. Peace out.